Right, in this video, we're going to discuss uh, the next part in Chapter 6. Uh, it's still on the second law of thermodynamics. We're just going to be looking at a different uh, cycle. Okay, so in the first part, uh, you've seen the video on the heat engine or more specifically the steam power plant. Right, so here, it's uh, we're talking about a diff completely different process. As you can see, the title is refrigerators and heat pumps. So uh, look at the two boxes there. We have low temperature medium and high temperature medium. So I'm sure all of you know uh, in what direction heat naturally uh, flows. Okay, if you think about your drink, your hot drink uh, becoming cooler when you put it in a room. So that means heat flows from high temperature to low temperature medium naturally. All right, but does that mean that we can't have the opposite? Is it impossible for heat to flow from low temperature to high temperature? Okay, the answer is no, it's not impossible, but we just cannot do it naturally. We need the help of a device. Okay, so obviously the device is refrigerator. All right, so what a refrigerator does, let's say you have this um, compartment all right so this is where you place all your food and it is already cool let's say the refrigerator is at 3 degrees Celsius and the room outside this is your uh, let's say kitchen is at 27 degrees Celsius so what's happening is you put a device, okay, so this is your, let's say, refrigeration cycle. Let's just assume this is the refrigeration cycle. Don't be fooled. Whatever that's inside this compartment, it's just a box, okay? It's just a place where you put your food. Okay, don't regard this as the refrigerator. Refrigerator are just separate devices that are combined in order to keep whatever inside this compartment at a certain temperature. Okay, so this compartment is already at 3 degrees. Okay, but what happens when you turn off the refrigerator? Heat will start transferring naturally this way, right? From high temperature to low temperature. So that is what happens if you turn off the refrigerator. So you need to keep the refrigerator on. We need to have it in between so that whatever heat that is transferred here is removed. Okay, so that the food compartment remains at 3 degrees Celsius. Okay, we take it for granted. We don't think that there will be heat transfer when the refrigerator is on. But actually, there's always heat transfer. Because the inside the fridge is always cold, outside is always warmer, and therefore heat transfer is always happening between outside and to the compartment inside. So we always need to keep removing heat. That's why the fridge is on all the time. Okay, so that is um, what we're going to discuss in this video. Okay, so what you're seeing here is the most commonly used refrigeration cycle. It's called vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Okay, so it has four uh, components. It involves four components and working fluid is called refrigerant. Okay, so the fluid, uh, like before in the heat engine, we looked at the steam power plant. So the working fluid was steam, water. Okay, so here... Working fluid is called refrigerant. Just like in the aircon system, working fluid is refrigerant, right? Okay, so where can we start here? Let's start at the uh, compressor. Okay, so at the compressor. You've learned about compressors in Chapter 5. You know that compressor um, absorbs, uh, sorry, it needs electricity to operate. It needs power. Okay, so we have work input. So you have to supply some 
electricity for it to start working. Uh, and what it does is it, it compresses um, the substance okay, to higher pressure and higher temperature. So the refrigerant enters at 120 kPa and minus 20 degrees. This is in vapor state. All right, and it is compressed in the compressor to 800 kPa and 60 degrees. Okay, next, um, as it leaves the compressor, it enters the condenser. And what happens here? Condenser, of course, condenses. Condenses mean turning from vapor to liquid. How to turn vapor to liquid? You cool it down. How to cool it down? We discharge heat. So it discharges heat to the surrounding medium, to the basically to the air inside the room. Okay, if your fridge is in the kitchen, so it will discharge heat to the kitchen air. That's why, um, especially in older refrigerators, if you stand close to it, you can feel the heat where it is discharging um, all the heat carried by the refrigerant. Okay, so when you discharge the heat from the refrigerant, it becomes cool. And then it condenses. Condenses means become liquid. Okay, so the properties will change. It's still 800 kPa, but now it's 30 degrees. From 60, it's 30 degrees. So if you're wondering, how can the heat transfer happen? Because it's 60 degrees here. And the surrounding kitchen is like what we assumed just now, 27 degrees. 60 is higher than 27, so obviously, heat transfer will naturally happen. Okay, so as it leaves the condenser, it has to enter the expansion valve. So what happens in the expansion valve? Um, it's just a, like a capillary tube for throttling effect. You can refer to our notes in chapter 5. Okay, we did discuss this a little bit. So what happens here is a drastic drop in pressure and temperature. So it loses some temperature here, yes, after the condenser, but it's not enough. We want it to be colder. Okay, we want to expand it even more because it needs to do some work afterwards, which you will see. Okay, so 800 becomes 120. 30 degrees becomes negative 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so now it's very cold. Alright, so next, it enters the evaporator. So evaporator, what it does is it evaporates the refrigerant. Okay, how do you evaporate something? You evaporate something by adding heat to it. So how is heat being added to the refrigerant? Because it becomes, um, it comes in contact with the refrigerated space. So it enters at minus 25 degrees. Let's say your fridge is about, um, we discussed just now, let's say the freezer. Okay, minus 2 degrees Celsius. So which one is higher? The freezer is higher, minus 2. So it will automatically, naturally transfer heat to the refrigerant that passes through the evaporator. Okay, so it says refrigerant at low temperature enters the evaporator. It evaporates by absorbing heat from the refrigerated space. Okay, so this is the important bit here where the cooling is happening. Because of this, your uh, the contents inside your fridge or the space inside the fridge remains cold. Okay, if this doesn't happen um, or it's not efficient enough, then you will not get this refrigerated space being at a certain constant temperature that we want. Alright, so after this, the process continues. Minus 20, still the same. But from negative 25, I'm sorry, this one, uh, pressure 120 is still the same. But the temperature will increase a little bit. It enters at negative 25, it leaves at negative 20. It's a bit warmer. 
because it has absorbed all the heat from here. Okay, so that is the refrigeration cycle. And please don't um, get mistaken. This is considered as one device. And if you're thinking where is your food, it is here. Okay, I'll just write food space. Not at the center of the cycle. I've had students, I know this, is, this seems obvious, but I've had students thinking that this is the box, meaning the refrigerator. And you have all the devices nicely put around the box and the food is inside. No, this is the refrigerated space is where you keep your food. The surrounding medium um, is where we release all the heat. Okay, so um, that's for the cycle. You can rewind if you need to listen to the explanation again. Okay, so this is more like what we normally see in our house, right? So we have the normal compartment at the bottom and then the freezer compartment is at the top. Okay, this is a typical layout. So what, uh, where are the components? We have four components, remember? So can you identify them when you look at the uh, diagram like this? Okay, so the blue compartment and the blue coils that you see here are the evaporator coils. These coils are responsible to absorb all the heat from the refrigerated space. Okay, it passes through from here. Okay, let's take it from here. It passes through and then it absorbs all the heat and then it leaves the system, okay? Um, okay, I'll just open all of them. And then it travels downwards to the compressor, which compresses the refrigerant to high pressure. Okay, after the compressor, it starts entering the condenser coils. Condenser is where the refrigerant condenses. Remember, condensers change from vapor to liquid. How to do this? Release heat. So that means this is where heat is released to the surrounding air. This is the surrounding air. Okay, and then expansion device to expand to reduce the pressure and it enters the evaporator coils again where heat is being transferred. Okay, so we have two points of heat transfer. This one, if you recall from the previous slide, is labeled as QH. This is labeled as QL. Why? Because QH refers to the surrounding that is of high temperature compared to the um, inside refrigerated space, which is at low temperature. This might be 30 degrees. This might be minus 5 degrees. Okay, so this is, these are all the components placed according to their actual location. All right, so if we, we want to view it more easily, then we can just do this. This is your QH, this is your QL, this is TH and TL. Okay, so... Now we have understood the process, the refrigeration cycle. How do we measure the efficiency? Okay, we have done this for heat engine, for the steam power plant. So for the refrigerator, we still use the same concept, but we call it something else. Okay, we don't call it efficiency. I will explain why we call it coefficient of performance. Okay, so what is this coefficient of performance? For short, we can call it COP. Efficiency is measured in terms of COP. So COP is still desired result over required input. Okay, remember desired result is what we want. Okay, what we want from the device. Input is what we must pay 
for the device to function. So that's the same as efficiency. So the only thing that's different is the name. Okay, so this is your cycle, refrigeration cycle. This is your kitchen air, warm environment. This is your cold refrigerated space. So here QL is removed and here QH is being discharged. And of course, we have to have work input. For your refrigerator to work, you need to plug in, right? And turn it on. So that's having work input. Okay, so what do we want from the refrigerator? Of course, we want to have the cold space. Okay, why you buy the fridge? So that you can put all your food inside the fridge and it will remain cold. So what we want here is the cold refrigerated space. To have that, we need to remove a certain amount of heat. So this is what we want. This is what we desire from the device. And what must you pay? Of course, you must pay electricity. Where is the part that consumes electricity? It's here. The work input to the compressor. Okay, so now if you understand that, it is so much easier. You don't need to memorize. Okay, so the COP, the coefficient of performance, R is for refrigerator is what we want QL over what we pay the work in. Right? Very simple. So what we want to achieve, what we must pay. Okay, so now um, we can have variations of this equation just like in the steam power plant. So you apply the first law to the cyclic refrigerator, you will get this relation. Work in equals to QH minus QL. So anytime, as I said in the previous video, it see work QH minus QL. In the previous, in the steam um, power plant, work output QH minus QL. But basically, the network will be QH minus QL. Okay, this doesn't change. So it's easy for you to remember this part. So you can combine this with the COP equation and then we get this. Okay, COP is what we want QL over what we pay, work input, which can be written as QH minus QL. So this is the equation. Alright, so what kind of values are we expecting for COP? Because for efficiency, it's between 0 to 1. Or if you're talking about percentage, 0 to 100%. Okay, for COP, it will be different. Just by looking at this equation, we know that the top is higher of higher value than the bottom. So that will result in answer that is bigger than 1. Okay, so that is the typical values. COP of refrigerator bigger than 1. Okay, you will get used to it. Uh, we will do some questions in this video and also in class and uh, you will see this. Okay, let's try this one simple example. The food compartment of a refrigerator is maintained at 4 degrees Celsius. This is the cold temperature, so that's your TL. By removing heat from it at a rate of 360 kilojoules per minute. So what do we label 360 kilojoules per minute? We know that it is the heat being removed here. Look at the units. It's kilojoule over time, therefore, QL, Q dot L. Okay, so if the required power input is 2 kilowatts, we write that here. Determine the COP of the refrigerator, the rate of heat rejection. So this is COP, rate of heat rejection to the room that houses the refrigerator, that's your QH. So what is QH? 
Okay, these are the two things that we need to find. And please um, take note that the, the direction of the arrow. Okay, we always put the food compartment uh, down at the bottom because it's the lower temperature and then it goes up. Okay, heat is being removed by the refrigerator and then being discharged to the kitchen. Little things that you should um, notice because most of the time you have to sketch this diagram yourself. You don't have to sketch the details, just a circle and the arrows are sufficient. So make sure you get that right. Okay, now the COP. So we have the equation. COP is what you want. In this case, we're given a rate. So QL, write it as a Q dot L. Over what we pay is the work input also with the dot. And the units are not the same. So you have to convert one of them. Kilojoule per minute, you can change to kilojoule per second. How to do that? Change minute to second. Okay, one minute is 60 seconds. So change that, you get three. I said just now, COP is more than one. Okay, so we get three. This is the coefficient of performance. Uh, next, the rate of heat rejection to the room. That's QH. So we just use the relation work equals to QH minus QL. Okay, solve for QH. Um, just now we had 360 QL plus work is uh, 2 kilowatts, so you can convert one of them. Both are fine. You can convert this to kilojoule per second, or you can convert kilowatt to kilojoule per minute. Doesn't matter as long as the answer is correct. Okay, so again, um, if this is a very simple example. Okay, so we try one more and the rest we can discuss uh, together in class. Okay. So we have a household refrigerator. This is a bit tricky. It runs one fourth of the time. What does it mean? It means in one hour, you only turn it on for 15 minutes. We do this, right? Sometimes let's say you sleep for eight hours, but you on your aircon only for uh, two hours or three hours or whatever time, but not the whole time. So this is very common. Because if the heat is removed sufficiently, you don't need it to be on the whole time. So the same applies to the refrigerator. If it is cold enough uh, for what we want, then we don't need to have it turned on all the time. Okay, so here it runs only 15 minutes for every hour and it removes the heat from the food compartment at an average rate of 800 kilojoules per hour. So it runs for 15 minutes, but the rate is given per hour. All right, let's see how we can use this information. So this, the Q that is removed is 800 kilojoules per hour. If the COP of the refrigerator is 2.2, given the COP, determine the power of the, re uh, the refrigerator draws when running. So what's the work input? All right, so we want to determine the work input. So let's work out what is this 800 kilojoule per hour. All right, so first we need to calculate what is the actual QL because it is not 800 kilojoule per hour. Okay, why is it not 800? Because 800 kilojoule is only when it functions for 15 minutes. Okay, so for example, this is your time. This is where it works. The rest, the refrigerator is off. So here it removes 800 kilojoule. Here it's off, so it removes zero kilojoule 0 kilojoule, 0 kilojoule. So in total, 1 hour, how much heat does it remove? 800 kilojoule per hour. But this is not 
the capacity of the refrigerator. If it can remove 800 kilojoule for that 15 minutes, that means it can remove 800 times 4. Okay, every 15 minutes, it can remove 800 kilojoule. So if you turn it on, it will remove 3200 kilojoule. Okay, so that's why I said this is a bit tricky. It gives you the rate, but it's not the actual rate. Okay, so this is the actual capacity. Alright, so based on this capacity, this is how much um, heat is being removed at one time. And from there, we can calculate how much electricity it consumes when it is running. Okay, so let me just remove that. Okay, so the work input, we can use the COP equation. COP equals to what we want, what we, uh, I'm sorry, that's not right. COP is what we want, coal space, what we pay, electricity. So rearrange this to get work in. So QL over COP. The QL we calculated here. COP is given. We get this answer. You can answer in kilowatt also. Okay, convert the hour to seconds. Divide by 3,600. Okay, so that's another example. Uh, for the rest of the questions, we will discuss in class.